Hello, this is R.J. Deacon reading the Supreme Court of the United States Opinion Syllabus in Manaski v. Teglieri, certiorari to the United States Court of Appeals for the Sixth Circuit, argued December 11, 2019, decided February 25, 2020. The Hague Convention on the Civil Aspects of International Child Abduction, Hague Convention or Convention, implemented in the United States by the International Child Abduction Remedies Act, that's 22 U.S.C. Section 901, provides that a child wrongfully removed from her country of habitual residence ordinarily must be returned to that country. Petitioner Manaski, a U.S. citizen, asserts that her Italian husband, Respondent Taglieri, became abusive after the couple moved to Italy from the United States. Two months after the birth of the couple's daughter, AMT, in Italy, Manaski fled with the infant to Ohio. Teglieri petitioned the U.S. District Court for the Northern District of Ohio for AMT's return to Italy under the convention, pursuant to 22 U.S.C. Section 903B, on the ground that the child had been wrongfully removed from her country of habitual residence. The District Court granted Teglieri's petition, concluding that the parents' shared intent was for their daughter to live in Italy. Then, two-year-old AMT was returned to Italy. The in-bank Sixth Circuit affirmed. Under its precedent, the court first noted an infant's habitual residence depends on the parent's shared intent. It then reviewed the district court's habitual residence determination for clear error and found none. In doing so, the court rejected Monaski's argument that Italy could not qualify as AMT's habitual residence in the absence of an actual agreement by her parents to raise her there. The Supreme Court held, the, uh, the decision is affirmed and Justice Ginsburg delivered the opinion of the court. A child's habitual residence depends on the totality of the circumstances specific to the case, not on categorical requirements such as an actual agreement between the parents. The inquiry begins with the convention's text, and the context in which the written words are used. See Air France versus Sachs. The convention does not define habitual residence, but as the convention's text and explanatory report indicate, a child, a child habitually resides where she is at home. This fact-driven inquiry must be sensitive to the unique circumstances of the case and informed by common sense. See Redmond versus Redmond. Acclimation of older children and the intentions and circumstances of caregiving parents are relevant considerations, but no single fact is dispositive across all cases. The treaty's negotiation and drafting history corroborates that habitual residence depends on the specific circumstances of the particular case. See Medellin versus Texas. This interpretation also aligns with the habitual residence determinations made by other nations party to the convention. Monaski's arguments in favor of an actual agreement requirement are unpersuasive. While an infant's mere physical presence is not, dispositive, not a dispositive indicator of an infant's habitual residence, a wide range of facts other than an actual agreement including those indicating that the parents have made their home in a particular place, can enable a trier to determine whether an infant's residence has the quality of being habitual. Nor is adjudicating a dispute over whether an agreement existed a more expeditious way of prompting returns of abducted children and deterring would-be abductors than according court's leeway to consider all the circumstances. Finally, Imposing a categorical actual agreement requirement is unlikely to be an appropriate solution to the serious problem of protecting children born into domestic violence, for it would leave many infants without a habitual residence, and therefore outside the convention's domain. Domestic violence should be an issue fully explored in the custody adjudication upon the child's return. The convention also has a mechanism for guarding children from harms of domestic violence. Article 13b allows a court to refrain from ordering a child's return to her habitual residence 
if there is a grave risk that the child's return would expose the child to physical or psychological harm or otherwise place the child in an intolerable situation. A first instance habitual residence determination is subject to deferential appellate review for clear error. A trial court's habitual residence determination presents a mixed question of law and fact that is heavily fact-laden. The determination thus presents a ta task for fact-finding courts and should be judged on appeal by a clear error review standard. See U.S. Bank North America v. Village at Lake Ridge. There is no historical tradition indicating otherwise. Also see Pierce v. Underwood. Clear error review has a particular virtue in Hague Convention cases. By speeding up appeals, it serves the Convention's emphasis on expedition. Notably, courts of other treaty partners also review first instance habitual residence determinations deferentially. Given circumstances of this case, it is unnecessary to disturb the judgment below and remand the case to give the lower courts an opportunity to apply the governing totality of the circumstances standard in the first instance. The decision below is affirmed. Justice Ginsburg delivered the opinion of the court in which Chief Justice Roberts and Justices Breyer, Sotomayor, Kagan, Gorsuch, and Kavanaugh joined, and in which Justice Thomas joined as to parts 1, 3, and 4. Justice Thomas and Alito filed opinions concurring in part and concurring in the judgment. Thank you for listening. If you'd like to get a hold of us, we can be reached at RhodesScholar80 at gmail.com or at Court Syllabus on Twitter.